All right, so I don't want to be that guy, but I just recorded an entire video on how I farm my Lotus passively and my mic was muted for the entire thing. So this is going to be take two. Hopefully it's a little cleaner anyways, because I was rambling a lot during that video. But as you can see here, we have a total of 69 Lotus on our Alliance, which we have three accounts, but we only really farm on two of them. At one point, I had, I think, 120 on this character, but I'm going to show you all the secret of how I passively farm my Lotus to be able to sell around 20 to 30 per week to my guildies, and I'm not even selling these at full price because I just, you know, I farm them AFK, and I want to be the plug for my guildies and whatnot, but I think right now I have 120 Lotus on both characters combined, so let's get right into it. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to passively farm these guys. So, what I like to do while I'm at work, a lot of you guys know I work at a golf course and some days it's just slow. You know, it's either rainy or it's just a really crappy day out. I still have to be there. I have to be a body at the computer. So, I might as well make advantage of my time and potentially farm Lotus. So, I'm on a 15-year-old computer at work which can barely play WoW, and if a customer comes in, I have to close WoW because I won't be able to, I won't be able to ring them out because the computer will crash. So, this is my setup for how I straight up passively farm Lotus. I literally do not hunt for Lotus anymore. This is what I do. I waste so many hours into it, but you never know. I had my best day of AFKing Lotus yesterday, and I got seven Lotus in like four hours. It was crazy. So, the first thing you're gonna want, going to want to do not English, sorry, is open up your Twitch app or whatever website that you get your add-ons at, and you're going to want to search for GatherMate, and you're going to want to download two things. You're going to want to download a GatherMate 2, which is the add-on that shows you all these little icons on your mini-map where it'll let you know where a certain herb or an orb will spawn on the world, and then you download GatherMate 2 data. Once you have both those downloaded, you're going to want to open up your game, and then you go to interface options, and then you slide on over to add-ons, GatherMate 2, and then you go to import, and this will have the option to import all of the data from the GatherMate 2 data. You select what you want to download, fishing, herbalism, mining, whatever. In this case, we're gonna go with herbalism, and then you import all of that data. That is going to show you every single possible herb on the map, every single zone, it's got you covered. So you have a couple options of what you can do with that. I like to personally take off all of the annoying herbs, stuff like Golden Sansom, all the low level herbs that you don't want to see. You can do this by going over to filters and then herbalism and you select all the crap that you don't want to see. And for example, in this case, we will do this with Black Lotus. So we'll go over to Gather Me 2, we'll go to filters and we will select none of them and then you just simply select black lotus and boom on the minimap it will only show you where a black lotus could potentially spawn so in this case there's 25 potential different spawns for black lotus and burning steps i do all of my black lotus farming in burning steps and only burning steps because of these two spots so the first spot is in the pillar of ash in southern burning steps we're at 5461 what i like to do is you find this little uh lava pit and I go right on the corner of this little uh, obtuse angle here. I just like to sit right in here. And I, again, I need to mention though, you could do this on any character, obviously. Any character can get herbalism, but stealth characters just makes it so much easier because the fact that you are AFK, you're not always looking at your screen. I'm either doing something at work, helping a customer. This just prevents you from dying a whole bunch. What's nice about the Pillar of Ash spawn is it's decently close to the graveyard. It's about a one minute walk back. If you do get killed, I do play on a PvP server, so people can come kill me, and you know, that would kind of suck. The other spot, which I have my rogue at, is in Draco Dar in Southwest Burning Steps, and it's pretty much just a couple paces off the lava pit here, which can spawn either imps or elementals. And the easiest way to make sure that you have vision of all of the Black Lotus is if you go see left or right here, we don't actually have the circle here. You want to make sure you have the circle for all four Lotus spawns here. If we go too far this way, we'll lose the one on the west side. So I like to sit 
just a couple paces off of the uh, imp pit here. And this is actually a safe spot for non-stealthies as well because there's not a single mob that will ever pat here to aggro you. So you could just be mounted up and be straight up chilling, not have to worry about it. So a couple of tidbits for how you should Lotus Farm in my opinion is Torin is the best possible herbalism class in the game because they have the racial passive of plus 15 herbalism. So when you pair that with the herbalism gloves that are enchanted, you have a 100% success rate to pick a black lotus. Obviously, if you take damage, that'll interrupt it, but you will never fail a pick, which is really awesome. So, Torrens, Druids, the only class that can stealth for a Torren, is just the best herbalist in the game because you have that stealth capability. And you have things like Roots, you have Hibernate, which can deal with a lot of these monsters as well. And then on the Alliance side, I just have a Rogue as well. It helps because they can go stealth and they can wear leather so that you can equip the herbalist gloves. No matter what you do though, you want to have a pair of herbalist gloves because they are cloth. Any class in the game can wear them and you want to enchant them because even though you can't get to 100% success rate, every single tick, every point of herbalism skill that you have will decrease that chance of failure. So you always want to be wearing herbalism gloves. And then the other tip that I have for you is both of these pits that were standing by the lava pits they have a chance to spawn elementals dude my phone is going crazy sorry about that you want to make sure that you always have an elemental spawn you don't want to have these imps spawned so for example we're going to come in and kill these imps strictly because there is a lotus that could spawn right here and to be able to cc these mobs is obviously really hard when there's five imps rather than just one elemental so since we have this elemental here we could root this elemental we could helmet with a rocket helm I could blind it, I could do a bunch of different things, I could even stun it and get the pick off in time. But with imps, it's way harder to obviously CC five things, so you'll probably have to kill them, which just makes that window that much bigger for someone to potentially walk up and steal your lotus. So I always make sure I have those killed and then hopefully an elemental will respawn. And then another great perk about this, you know, being a good AFK spot is dreamfoil spawns nearby there's two dreamfoil spots that will spawn at the pillar of ash and then there's one that will spawn actually i think two that will spawn at both so you just passively get dreamfoil as well and hardly anybody ever picks it so the other day i just sent i think 600 dreamfoil to our guild alchemist because it was just ruining my it was ruining my mailbox to be honest i had too much of it i didn't want to do anything with it so i just got rid of it all gave it to them but uh, now we'll just go over all of the actual spawn points. So for the Pillar of Ash, three spawn points. There's one that spawns on the eastern side. And you can actually run, you can straight up just run through these Wormkin and not aggro them if you do pat correctly. And then it'll spawn right underneath you by this little uh, bone and dead body. It'll spawn in between there. And then the third one, which is literally right next to you, you could pick this within two seconds of it spawning. It will spawn just on the outside of this pit, right about here. And the third one, you can pick this one on the west side of the Pillar of Ash. You can actually pick this without getting in combat too. It spawns on the corner of this little tomb. And obviously you can see I'm not aggroing the Warlocks here, so it'll spawn right there. Easy pickings. So all three of those are relatively a free pick if you pat properly and you have you know the proper setup of the elemental being killed. So. We will go ahead and go stealth here, and then we'll show all of these ones. Uh, we have three spawns here. There's one just on the outside of this pit as well. And then there's another one with all the dragons here. And again, you can actually pick this one potentially without aggroing anything as well. It'll spawn right about here, and you can pick it. If you aggro this, it's easy enough. You know, you could just blind this, and you can helmet. There's only ever one mob that will ever be able to hit you when you're picking these Black Lotus. And if you have the proper setup with the class or engineering, whatever, then you should be able to get them picked for free. And the other one is right over the corner here on this ridge. It'll spawn just on the other side. Potentially a wolf or a uh, scorpion could be padding there. So again, just CC it. And then the last one it spawns over by that log where there's no monsters there that'll cause any trouble for you as well. So why do I do this? In my opinion, this is probably the best way to make money without actually doing anything in the game, other than having to every now and then look at your computer screen. So I guess it depends on what server you're on. If it's a PvE server, obviously this is even less of a threat for you because you can't die to any players if you're on PvP. 
I would just suggest that you have a stealth class because it just makes it easier. But the fact that we have seven of the potential 25 spawns covered, and I'm really mad that this is my second take because I actually just did some quick math in the other video. I was like, seven out of 25, I guess that's around 28%. And then I actually put it into the calculator and it's literally 28% exactly to the dot. So I was pretty proud of myself, but I just wanted to flaunt about that uh, quick math there. So the fact that you will get over a fourth of every single black lotus that will spawn potentially if nobody can test you whatever you see it spawn easy pick lotus to my knowledge has a four to 20 minute spawn window i'm just saying you could get like four or five lotus in an hour and at the very least that's like 500 gold at the most on my server i think that would net me that would get me 750 gold in an hour while being AFK, doing something at work or whatever, where you just have to put minimal effort into getting the Lotus. So this is how I get every single Lotus. I do not hunt for Lotus anymore. I used to have scouts and stuff. I don't do that. I just get Lotus while you know, I'm at work or I'm raiding on one account. I have the other account pulled up like this where you can see one account is uh, max window. The other one's just minimized so I can see both mini maps. Easy peasy. I'm on the same layer, so I make sure... I'm on the same layer, so we can try to have that internal timer if we do get a pick. Why would you not do this? So, there's my tips for uh, farming Lotus. If you are on Feralina, don't try this because I will grief the shit out of you because this is how I make my gold. I'm sure there's other spots in the world that you could do this. I know there's a couple spots. Actually, let's look on this account. It's easier because we have only Lotus shown. I know in Winter Spring, I think you could see two here by standing in the middle of uh, Winterfall Village. Obviously, there's a couple of spots where it's easy to double down on Lotus. To my knowledge, though, this is the only spot in the world where you could have potentially three Lotus on your minimap or four Lotus. There's definitely a lot of spots we could double up, but I don't think there's any other spots we can get three. So, hey, I'm just saying. It's free, so go out and do it. Let me know if you guys have any success with this or if you want any other guides. I just kept getting asked by Gillies how I get all my Lotus, and here's my answer to you. Sorry, again, I rambled a little bit, but there's just so many things that you have to have precise to have this work out for you. So go make that gold passively and uh, enjoy Classic WoW.